What's up, guys? Welcome back. It's been a little bit since I've been live. If you're new here, I'm Kristen. I am an alignment and ascension guide. I am a confidence coach, angelic channel, lots of things. And I have been noticing this theme that's been coming up with my clients and it's been so present within me. And I feel like you need to hear this message too, right? So first of all, if you're joining, let me know where you're joining from. Let me know if you're an entrepreneur, why you follow me. I would just love to know a little bit more about you. And if you've ever been on these before, I, I do a lot of live trainings, but um, yeah, I love when I have new people and return people. So just let me know where you're joining from and if you've ever been here before. But yeah, I'm Kristen and I haven't really talked about the inner child a lot. And the reason that the inner child is such a big thing, especially when we're trying to reach our goals in business is because we essentially operate as adults as inner children, right? And so today I got on all of my client calls and I noticed that all of my clients were really operating from the space of their inner child. They were coming to their calls really triggered. They were coming into their business and they were kind of like throwing mini fits, right? And something that I reminded them, and one of the things that I think that we forget on the healing journey is sometimes we over we over identify with the inner child, right? And I, I know that we need to heal the inner child. I am clearly somebody who loves inner child healing. It has changed my entire life. It has helped me heal procrastination. It's helped me heal perfectionism, fear of being seen, fear of judgment, fear of rejection, not believing in myself, my confidence issues. It has helped me deal with everything. But sometimes our inner child tries to take over. What does that mean? It means that we're operating so much out of our inner child that we are not even allowing our higher self to take over. Now, this is the gold that I want to say today. This is literally the reason I came on this live. Because when we're on this healing journey, when we're trying to reach our goals, when we're trying to build our businesses, we have to remember that even though our inner child is so important, we also have to operate in our higher self. What does that look like? I'm going to give you guys an example. If you listened to my last podcast, you heard it was about a lot of rock bottoms. It was about me getting out of my rock bottom. And what I shared is sometimes I noticed my inner child would be like crying on the floor for like three days and being like, I hate my life right now. This is so hard. How do I get out of this? And sometimes we have to allow our higher self to come in as the loving mother, as the loving parent and say, girl, get your ass up. You've been crying for three days and this is not serving you anymore. And you have a mission to build and you have a business to build and you have things to tend to in your life, right? And sometimes when we let our inner child take over, we can't allow the higher self to really do its job and get us where we want to go. And this is what I really want to say about this is there's a time and there's a place for both. There's a time where you need to tend to your inner child and go do your inner child meditation and cry and scream your heart out. And there's also a time where you need to allow your higher self to really step in and say, you know what? Enough is enough. You need to just go post that post. You need to just go show up for your business. You need to just go do what you need to do, right? And this is something that I mentioned in my clients in Scared to Seen. And just a little plug, if you haven't seen my um, my new pro or not my new program, my program that I'm running for the second time, Scared to Seen, is about to open for enrollment. The wait list is open. So go join the wait list in my bio if you're interested. I'm about to give the wait list a little early bird pricing in a couple weeks. But in Scared to Seen, we've been talking about Okay, a lot of the things that we want to do, like posting online or promoting our offer or making a new reel, they're scary, but they're not impossible. And that's really when your higher self can tell your inner child, hey, this is scary, but you can still freaking do it. This is hard, but you got to kind of get up your get off your ass and do it. Right. And so what happens in scared to scene is I kind of push my clients to do all these things that they don't feel completely ready to do or they feel scared to do or they don't feel. Yeah, they're like not ready, but they still do them. And what they come back to me after like, Kristen, I feel so confident in myself now because I realized I can do it. And I'm like, duh, duh, you can do it. And we forget, guys, we forget that we can do hard things. We forget that just because we're scared 
doesn't mean we can't show up. We forget that we have the ability to dig deep and lean into courage if we don't have the confidence. That's one of my favorite sayings is if you don't have the confidence, find the courage to do it. And so this is for you if you feel like you've been wanting to post online, you've been wanting to um, go live, you've been wanting to promote your new program, you've been wanting to get your first client, you've been wanting to say that you're a coach, whatever your scary thing is. I want to just remind you that you can do it. It's scary, but you can still do it. You can show up for that thing. So it's like, when are you going to stop letting your inner child run the show and just show up for that thing? And if you're like, okay, Kristen, but it's really scary and my inner child is freaking out and I'm having a panic attack. Okay, well then you should be doing inner child work. You should be getting a meditation and taking yourself through it. You should be regulating your nervous system, right? I was having this thought the other day or last night actually, and I was like, I don't resonate with people who, who don't go all in on their business. Like I just don't. People who say they want to be a coach and, and they 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 don't they don't actually post every day. I'm like, can't resonate. I was having that thought last night. I was like, don't resonate because when I was so miserable at my corporate job, there was no other option for me but to show up for this thing because I was in so much pain. And so I was having this conversation with my friend the other day and we were talking about this person that we mutually knew and I was just like, I really want her to change, but you know, she's, she's not there yet. And I said, and she said to me, she goes, she's not in enough pain. And I was like, you're right. She's not in enough pain because when we're in enough pain, we change. I'm going to say that again. When we're in enough pain, we change. But I also believe that we don't have to get to the point where we're fucking miserable to change. In fact, it's going to be a lot harder to do that. And so I'm not sure who needs to hear this, but where can you take some preemptive action and start to make your make moves so that you don't end up in a miserable place, right? Because sometimes we have to get our far ass and work. I love that Kim Kardashian um, saying that's like, get your fucking ass up and work. Seems like nobody wants to work these days because... I think that that's true. That's the masculine in me. And that's like a little bit, I know can be a little aggressive for some people, but like at the end of the day, I work on this business and this mission every single day. It's my everything. My heart's connected to it. And for you, you have to get to the point where you believe in this thing so fucking much, right? So I was talking to my client this morning and she was talking about one of her programs and she was just like, no one's going to join, blah, 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 blah. And I reminded her, I go, girl, you don't even believe in this program. Look how you're talking about it. You want other people to believe in it, but you don't believe in it. That's ludicrous. You're wanting other people to pay you money, but you don't believe in this thing. You don't even think people are going to join. This is why the belief work, the mindset work, the inner child work matters so fucking much. Because if you can't even get to the point where you believe in something, but you're wanting reality to mirror back to you that other people believe in you so you feel good enough. That's crazy. That's crazy, guys. No. Reality will only mirror back to you what you feel about yourself. Reality is only a mirror to how you feel about yourself. And so when you start feeling like this work is fucking life-changing, that's when people are going to hire you. When you feel like, dude, this work is worth so much more than I'm charging, that's when people are going to hire you. When you are literally so committed to the mission you're committed to the bit, you're like, I will show up for this every single day because I know that this is, this is going to change people's lives. People can fucking feel that they can feel your energy, right? You can feel my energy through the screen that this is just something that I don't care about. You can feel that I care about helping people heal and believe in themselves so that other people believe in them, right? Because that's actually the medicine. You want people to believe in you. You got to believe in you. You want other people to love you. You got to love you. You want other people to respect you. You got to respect you. It's always just a mirror. And so back to the main point of this live, we have to do the inner child work, but we also have to remember that there's times where we're going to just have to get out of our comfort zone and do what needs to be done. And that's when our higher self is allowed to take over and really pull us out of those moments, right? So that's what I had to say today. Feel free to drop any questions below. If you guys have any questions for me, mindset, procrastination, perfectionism, fear of being seen, 
I'll stay on for like another minute and see if anything comes through. But if not, then um, I want to let you guys know that I have a few ways that you can work with me. All of my meditations, inner child, shadow, abundance meditation linked on my profile. I do have one space available to work with me one-on-one -on -one in Soulful Strategy. So if you're a coach, healer, entrepreneur wanting to overcome your fear of being seen and start your soul-based business from the ground up, you can apply to work with me there. And then Scared to Seen is about to reopen. If you're not on the wait list, I'm about to um, email the late wait list with a discount code to enroll early and you guys get like $200 off. So if you're not on the wait list and you want to join Scared to Scene, my eight-week visibility accelerator for coaches, healers, and entrepreneurs, then that's what you're going to want to do. But yeah, and if you have any questions on like, Kristen, I want to work with you. I also have quantum healing sessions available. Um, so if you guys have any questions about any of those things, then you can feel free to DM me. But I had so much fun on this live with you. And yeah, I love when you guys message me. I love when you guys ask me questions. Feel free to always get in the DMs. I always reply. Um, but yeah, this training will be on my YouTube, Kristen Such. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.